Hey folks, Kevin here. Well, it's July 2nd, 2021, and today I thought what I'd do is just share a progress report, not on the gardens, but on, uh, on equipment and all. Uh, I mentioned previously that uh, it would seem like we're in a pretty much a buying spree because we've recently sold uh, Optimus Prime, the Case 995. We've sold Bumblebee, the PC27 uh, MR2 mini excavator. We sold the Mahindra uh, tractor with a snowblower, and, and we've ordered uh, some new tractors. I've ordered a new excavator as well, and then recently we got uh, a rototiller, a tree puller. We already have the uh, rock and brush grapple, and the, I'll be making videos on all those, but a quick update on on the rototiller and the tree puller I mentioned before. These are prime attachment ones. They've already contacted me and let me know that they've got the shipments out for, to replace the hyd hydraulic lines and the uh, the flat face coupler for the rototiller. Those things were damaged in shipping during shipment and all, so I'm pretty excited that those uh, are getting shipped back. Uh, one of the things, well, several things that I've been working on recently before, there was a motorcycle here, the, uh, the Yamaha Royal Star Venture, uh, that sold, had to spend some time working on that. Last year I was pretty sick, so uh, the Dixie Chopper ended up uh, sitting on the back burner. <laughs> and, uh, I really not, did not get around to do maintenance on, on much of the equipment last year at all. So I thought what I'd do is talk to you a little bit about the Dixie Chopper since I'm talking about you know purchasing so many things. I'm not planning on selling this or replacing this anytime soon. Uh, when I ultimately want to replace this piece of equipment, I'm gonna re want to replace it with an electric uh, zero turn mower. Uh, but a little bit on the history. So almost 20 years ago in 2002, uh, this, this is a 2002 72 inch uh, XXW2600 quad loop uh, uh, Dixie chopper mower. Uh, I bought this because it, after doing a lot of uh, research, it seemed like the ideal mower to help me make some of the changes that we've made over the years here. Uh, one of the conditions that I had was, could this cut uh, three foot tall brush? and all uh, when I, or to uh, an unmowed pasture so we had horse pastures up front where the second food forest is and uh, and I knew I wanted to be able to, to knock down stuff it wouldn't be a good clean cut the first time but this thing would have to do it so the uh, company rep brought brought uh, either this machine or another machine out <coughs> I think it was a 60 inch one and I was really impressed um, and so what are some of the things that I actually like about this zero turn mower? Uh, now this is labeled as the fastest mower in the world. Uh, I think there's mowers that are faster than the Dixie Choppers now. And Dixie Chopper had pretty good, uh, a pretty good reputation out west uh, with lawn care services and all. Uh, for being very reliable. Uh, they have a uh, Collier what is this a cv265 i think it is uh, has a tuned exhaust uh, uh, is stainless steel uh, throughout the body really super heavy frame on this uh, on this dixie chopper the deck on it is absolutely powerful one of the things i did do when i when i purchased it i said geez what if i bang into something <clears throat> one of our um, uh, four by six um, posts that we had for each one of our fencing because around the board fencing I had four by six pressure treated uh, timbers in the ground and the guy told me just go ahead and bang right into it I banged right into it a couple of times and didn't put a dent in it the other thing is we have really super rocky ground here on, on our property and uh, so I got the extra heavy duty blades on it. I probably replaced the blades four or five times over the years and resharpen them but they're always getting banged by rocks. Uh, now I just took some paint. This is the first time I've ever done any painting on it but there was some rust building up on it so I went ahead and scratched that down since I had to come in here and work on it the last, uh, the last couple of weeks. But before I started doing any of the repairs here to the deck, uh, after 17 years, last year I was having troubles with it. I'd be out mowing, it'd be running perfectly, and then it, it stopped dead. 
I checked the sparks, uh, the, uh, make sure the fuel line, it was getting fuel. The fuel pump appeared to be well, uh, appeared to be normal. I checked the sparks. Uh, I changed the plugs last year, but that was about it. <coughs> And uh, and it would do it episodically, and it would only do it when I'd bump into something. Uh, so if I bumped into a, uh, the, a bit of a tree or uh, a, 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 something, something solid, <coughs> it would stall then, and it would not start back up. Uh, so that was frustrating, but I was able to deal with it. Well, the same thing happened this season when I first started taking it out. And so then I started going through it uh, uh, through the the electronics on it and I discovered that there were actually several problems so there was a relay here um, I went ahead and replaced the relay but one of the things I noticed was that maybe the relay wasn't bad but there was corroded terminals and years ago I learned so we live in Oswego New York so we get lots of snow lots of salt on the roads and all and so every time I take a hook up to my trailer my dump trailer behind my truck I go through all of the contacts back there and use uh, uh, a dielectric grease or a contact cleaner one of those two and then I put the dielectric grease on it and that's uh, good. That's okay for electronics and all, and it really it reestablishes or, or breaks down some of the corrosion that builds up on the contacts. But uh, so I went ahead and replaced some of those. Replaced the ground wire in here as well. I went ahead and found uh, three uh, other small shorts or corroded terminals in each one of these uh, sections. Uh, there's, I suspect that there's still one more corroded terminal that I'll have to go through eventually. But uh, because the, uh, all of the, the grass and the weeds had really gotten so deep out amongst the, uh, in, the, in the food forest, I went out there and started hacking things down. Hit a couple of big rocks. And uh, so on the deck, so I've replaced the spindles in the past. And these are really nice heavy-duty uh, drive spindles that are on the Dixie Chopper. Uh, and they really hold up as long as you keep them greased. I've, I think I've replaced all three of these spindles once uh, and maybe one of them twice. I can't remember which one. But one of the things I see is these uh, the, the way that they build these uh, pulleys. You can see this pulley just snapped right off here. And, uh, and this has been a regular problem. So I've got that one on order. Uh, the blades I've got on order as well. And yesterday I just discovered the uh, drive tensioning pulley that goes right here. That one's uh, shot as well. So I just ordered that one. And I decided since it's gonna be a little while, I scrape it down and give it a shot of paint. Uh, then I went through it and I, uh, the bearings on this wheel, uh, were shot as well, so I just beat that one, got that one off, and replaced the bearings on that. I always keep extra bearings for these front wheels. These are never flat, uh, never uh, uh, run flat tires uh, on the front. Yes, it's a little more bouncy uh, as a result. It isn't as cushiony a ride, but with all of the thorns that we had here with the sea buckthorn or sea berry plants, that was important. And uh, so I guess what I wanted to say about this piece of equipment is my goal is not to replace it until we have something of the same size. And I'll be talking about a different mower that I want to get that's smaller than this, that's electric. But uh, until it's battery operated electric, we get something big and heavy duty like this, uh, I'm going to hold on to this unit because it works. It does such an amazing job. So here's one of the big problems that, I've hit, that I have is the parts are getting much more difficult to get. Uh, the dealership where, where I purchased this has gone out of business. Uh, so it's a couple hour drive to get to another service center someplace that will work on it, but there's even fewer and fewer people. Even with the Collier engine, just trying to get so, uh, uh, some place where they have the diagnostic uh, software to analyze it so I could go through this and just quickly determine, all right, where is the corrosion or does the oxygen sensor need to be replaced and all. So that's a bit of a hassle, but it's enough, it's old school enough that I can still work on this. There, there aren't any big computers and all, but the diagnostic software would certainly help to uh, troubleshoot this quickly 
and I'd be able to find identify the correct part to replace. So <clears throat> I guess that's what I wanted to say is that choosing equipment when, when I'm making a purchase, it's so important to get a piece of equipment where you believe that the, the company is going to be viable for quite some period of time and that parts that they'll continue to make legacy parts for these pieces of equipment that are getting to be close to 20 years old or 30 years old. I, I figure I probably have another uh, at least 10 years out of this this vehicle out of this piece of equipment because it's built so darn well. Uh, I have had and I know people love Ferris and Grasshopper and all so many other or, or you know all the other different um, manufacturers out there. I fell in love with this one because so many people had so many positive things to say and then when I was able to bang it into fence posts and be able to take down such tall tall uh, overgrown uh, pastures uh, that really uh, sold me on this piece of equipment. Are there is there better technology out there today? Is the deck raise the lo, raising and lowering the deck better and all? Are there better mulching systems? Yes, there are. But to take take it uh, to do move as quickly as you can with this piece of equipment because time is so precious. Uh, on our property, it, it, it's worked out very well. I just replaced the battery this this year too. I keep these on. You can see there's an extra set of lines. So all my pieces of equipment. I put uh, battery maintainers on them so all the batteries stay in good shape because if you're not using it for for months during the winter months or even during the summertime I try to maintain the batteries as well so that's one of the things I'm looking at so one does how many functions can each piece of equipment that we have I've used this to tow the dump trailer around uh, my smaller trailer around I've used it to pull all the things out of out of the uh, places uh, when other when uh, we you know when other pieces of equipment have gotten stuck, but this one's been pulled out by you know, like Pepe and other pieces of equipment as well. Uh, so being able to chop down big things and be sturdy and very rocky ground, uh, this has worked out very well. You could see some of the the rocks, some of the damage to the underside of this, but this deck is is built so well that it's held up for years. So. I think that's all I wanted to say about the Dixie Chopper. Uh, unfortunately, I, I'm not sure how long Dixie Chopper is going to be in business. It, uh, I know that they had some issues uh, over the last few years, and some of the dealerships all, uh, well, s several dealerships have gone out of business, So, uh, and I haven't dug into the company history, so that does concern me about uh, choosing another, because I, up until I found out that they were having troubles with the company, I would definitely say, hey, give me your first electric uh, uh, Dixie chopper uh, to be more environmentally conscious and to get off the, uh, the fuels. But at this point, I'm, I'm a little bit reluctant to, to, to go for a Dixie chopper until we find out how stable the company actually is. If anybody knows any information about that, I'd really like to love you to contribute in the comments down below. So. I think that's all I wanted to say about it. I've, I've loved this machine. It's worked so hard. It's, it's required so little maintenance over the last almost 20 years now. It's been absolutely a, a very good tool here on the property and I want to keep it as long as I can. So I guess if you found this video of value, please give us a thumbs up. Be sure to leave any comments on the pieces of equipment that you're using to take care of your homestead and farm. I'm really interested in, in those sorts of things. And if you know anything more about Dixie Chopper, I'd, I'd really like to hear about that as well. Well, thanks so much for watching, folks, and have a great day. Bye-bye now.